What's up, everybody? It's your boy Crazy Al Kane, SugarCane.com, CACTV, here with Edward Jacobs, representing Vanguard. Last time we did an interview was probably 2008 or 2009, I believe, and a lot of things have changed and got better, and I found out some new things about him that, uh, that we are closely related to. <laughs> as far as action sports is concerned. But first, let's talk about Vanguard. Tell me about the Vanguard movement, what you got going on. All right, it's great to see you again. Um, yeah, Vanguard is a completely new take on how the traditional way a motorcycle is built and designed. Uh, we've taken it, hopefully, to another level of integration with a full structural engine, uh, modular wiring harnesses, modular construction to ease manufacturing, uh, shaft drive, our own uh, six-speed transmission, um, completely cassette transmission, unitized uh, with a transmission, completely new take on a front-end design where there's no top triple tree anymore. Um, the entire front-end can now be built on the bench, wired and plumbed, and just connected to the bike with only one bolt. Final production, the entire motorcycle uh, goes together with only five bolts. So streamlining manufacturing, we're looking to offer the bike at an accessible price. We don't really believe in the luxury market, so we want everybody to be able to have the bike if they want it. So it's going through a dealer network. Uh, it's gonna be $30,000 and fully financeable. And so what we're doing is we're offering people a lot more design ideas, a lot more innovation, a lot more integration. We have about 30% less components, so we have a lot of smart parts. So basically parts that are doing multifunctional things. And so overall, I think we have a very robust uh, package. Uh, yeah, just very robust package for a very accessible price. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So let's take a look at the bike real quick. I'm going I'm to pass the mic to you. So what we have here is a new design that we have intellectual property on, which is an exhaust head turn, which allows us to keep a very rectilinear angle to the uh, kind of the similar geometry feel to the cylinder and the heads, but at the same time direct the header um, exhaust flow directly into the case. And so inside of this chamber here, we have a full 3D sculpted space to allow air to flow properly around that bend. So there's no 90 degree in there. There's a very fluid spline uh, that allows the proper flow of exhaust fumes. Now it dives directly through the engine case and to mitigate extra heat, what we've done is we've researched and found an incredible material, carbon foam, which is from aerospace. It's actually used for shielding the space shuttle and re-entry. Wow. So 1,800 degrees on one side, it is cool to the touch with only a quarter inch wall thickness of material. Wow. So that dives directly through. It enables us to basically take the header design out of the bike and just concentrate on the functional elements of the bike. The main function in driver is that the functional components in harmony with one another become the aesthetic of the bike. Since we've unitized the case, we have the swing arm pivot inside the case as well, and we have a single-sided swing arm, so on top, encapsulating the suspension, we have a structural bridge uh, to allow or to lessen any amount of flex that will happen when you're uh, when you're riding. And a lot of times having the glass is there to really put the rider in contact with the moving components of the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. So much in like in the modern world, we have black boxes that you can't tell what's going on inside. So this is a way to bring you back to the mechanical nature of what the bike is and for you to allow, to allow you to actually visually see what's going on or people to visually see what's going on. But this is a solid rim, which we'll be doing in carbon for the S version. The idea again behind this is to take the styling idea out of uh, out of the bike. So many times people use rim design as personal expression, but there is no conversation as far as pushing the envelope further, as far as what's really functional and what are the ideas that drive the bike. So we're trying to pull away from talking about stylized parts of the bike so people will focus more on the functional aspects of the bike. Fully full carbon tank, it actually rotates along this point with a pneumatic shock and two tapered roller bearings. What this allows you to do is to access the full top engine of the bike without taking a bike apart at all. Wow. So this rotates right up, you can service your top end without issue, and it also serves as an under the hood experience mm -hmm. that, um, that basically you only normally have in the car world. Mm -hmm. So now you have it in the motorcycle world. 
So you can actually look under the hood. Yeah, you can actually look <laughs> under the hood. And instead of it being a jumbled mess of a whole bunch of things, we're going to have our articulated and orchestrated electrical um, wiring harness. Uh -huh. It's where your air management is and, um, and your fluid fluid management. What this is is Ram Air Airbox. Gotcha. So the airbox is completely underneath, so the engine will never starve of air. So that's what that is. And that's built directly into the structure. So we don't have to have any type of plastic, injection molded, anything. You can notice here we haven't done any plastic parts really. The idea is to let the metal parts become, you know, have those the multifunction aspects so that they actually do the job of what those plastic components would normally do. Like we have LEDs in the front. Instead of having a plastic housing, we have a machined aluminum housing. The drivers for those LEDs are now rearward of those LEDs and the heat sink that's normally a separate part actually is the structural front end component is the heat sink and it's also the encapsulation of the components so it serves as the housing and also as the heat sink you know? so less components again that's yeah. the idea yeah. minimalistic right yeah minimal is really one of the things there really a less is more approach mm -hmm. and also the bike is completely naked so the bike has to resonate with a, a real um, idea about proportion and, uh, and balance without being able to create those things with plastic fairings and things like that. Right, right. Because the bike is completely naked, so everything is also integrated, like all your oil lines. Instead of having any separate oil lines, they're actually all machined into the case with long cross drill. We have three uh, oil reservoirs internal to the case with what is traditionally outside of the bike, oil line-wise, we've actually incorporated inside the bike completely. So we're able to clean everything up. You'll notice here that there's no lines anywhere, no electrical lines really showing, no hydraulic lines showing, nothing. Yeah, I'm a founder of the company. It's me, yeah, I'm a partner in the company. Mm -hmm. It's uh, me, you know, Edward Jacobs and Francois Turney is also my business partner. So basically it's a shaft drive swing arm. We have here, we have the full six-speed cassette transmission. Only five or six bolts and the entire thing can be pulled out and put on the bench to work on. Bevel drive, also another four or five bolts. Pull it up, put it on uh, the bench for to work uh, to work on. We've, one of the main things is allowing maintenance to be very uh, accessible, maintenance-wise. We actually took into context the person that would have to be working on the bike. Right. And these are also cues to the design as well. So a lot of times you get people complaining about a bike may look a certain way, may be beautiful, but it's a real pain to work on. Right. Here we've actually considered that aspect so that it makes a lot of organized sense the way you'll work on a bike. And it's real obvious right here. <laughs> yeah, like this right here, normally. Yeah. Um, this is a polycarbonate, but this in production will be a borosilicate, mm -hmm. high temperature deformation resistant ceramic based glass. Mm -hmm. So this this will actually stay all clear in production. That's awesome. Yeah. We have to tool up for it with hard tooling, so it'll be the next stage of development. Vanguard.nyc is where you can find that. You guys are based in New York, huh? Based in New York. We're actually designing, building, and engineering everything in, um, in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Incredible new space, yeah. Yeah, Brooklyn Navy Yard is actually innovating. Well, they're actually allowing and really um, supporting a lot of people that do, are doing innovative work. So now you got the update. It's a lot going on in the last what, seven, eight, eight, almost ten years now. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. It's very good to see you again. Thanks so much for taking the time. Always. I always got to represent. Yeah. And then, and then on top of that, I was telling him about my BMX roots. He's like, "Yo, I used to be a sponsored skater." So tell <laughs> us about that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, no, I, I grew up. I grew up skateboarding actually, um, you know, as a kid, always very active, but uh, mm -hmm. a lot of my younger years were, uh, yeah, ramps, tricks, staircases, handrails, the whole nice, thing. Nice, nice. So, yeah. We got footage yeah. of you doing that? Oh, I don't know. I think I have a cover on, a, on some magazine oh, one time I got, oh. but that was it. That was the one time. He's very humble right now. Not really humble. any footage. No, it was, no it footage? was back in the day, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, so, it was all about the skating, really. And you were sponsored by who? By Airwalk Sneakers and Sponsored Sartorius by Sport. Airwalk, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's big right there. It was, it was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah, a couple free pairs of sneakers and things like that. Nothing crazy, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you're, and you're originally from Brooklyn? Actually, originally from Connecticut. Connecticut yeah, right. but I, most of my adult life, I came out here to go to college and I you know, lived in a few other countries and things like that. But 
what Brooklyn is the closest thing I know to home, and you know Brooklyn is. Uh, I always feel pulled back, you know, to Brooklyn and, and really like it, like it in Brooklyn. Yeah. So let me ask you real quick now. You you make motorcycles. Yeah. You rode skateboards. Have you ever ridden a BMX bike or done any bicycling at all? Yeah, yeah, I've done bicycling. Yeah, yeah, completely. Actually, I think about uh, doing designs for bikes all the time, for bicycles all the time. Yeah. So you're yeah. very interesting. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. Cool. So a, a real Renaissance man right here. Yeah, yeah. A lot of things going on in his world right now. So check out Vanguard. They're doing some really great things. You guys heard it here first, all right? Edward Jacobs, uh, Vanguard, NYC. Back to you, Billy. Yeah. <laughs>